All right, so I've got a little problem here. I'm doing some DNS changes, and um, a couple of my domains are uh, failing to resolve domain names like Inside Track Party to the IP address. So, um, as part of fixing this, I've got to install Apache and WordPress. So, I figured I'd go ahead and show people how to install um, uh, MariaDB. So, um, uh, MariaDB, you can uh, search Ask Monty. Uh, let's see. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's bring up a web browser here. If you go to askmonty.com, all sorts of stuff about. Whoops. Ask Monty. Must not. Must be something different. Oh, .org. So, uh, askmonty.org. If you go here and look at the. Uh, uh, developer wiki and you can read about MariaDB and MariaDB versus MySQL. In essence um, the um, original development team which brought you MySQL years and years and years ago um, went through transitions where Sun picked them up and then Oracle absorbed Sun and uh, Oracle is just did a really poor job of uh, keeping up with MySQL, which is kind of the guts of the entire internet right now, because that's the primary uh, word or the primary database system that WordPress and Joomla and uh, Drupal use. The really big differences in um, MySQL and MariaDB are pretty straightforward. Uh, MariaDB started out by simply uh, applying patches, uh, security patch sets, and uh, storage engine patch sets uh, that have been laying around for years that uh, Oracle and Sun, I don't know if they're just inept at getting rolled into the source code. <clears throat> so storage engines are the uh, plugins that uh, plug into MySQL that allow different types of databases to be used because different applications require different databases or different database um, uh, data structures um, to be managed. Uh, so, MariaDB rolled in a lot of the storage engine patches, security patches, also fixed all the compile warnings. Uh, it used to be if you compiled uh, MySQL, um, you'd have thousands and thousands of uh, warnings. And it was really difficult to tell what was a warning that had to be taken into consideration and what was just noise. So they fixed all that. So the code compiles clean now. And also, m the most important thing is they fixed the dadgum test suite. Used to be MySQL, you'd run the tests and, you know, 30 or 40% of the tests would fail. And they were um, uh, faux failures. They were phony failures. And so it was really difficult to go through thousands of different um, test suite failures and figure out if there was a real failure or if it was something to ignore. So... Um, also, if you look, uh, let's see, MariaDB versus MySQL, uh, I believe, yeah, so uh, if you read this right here, uh, for all practical purpose, MariaDB is a binary drop-in replacement, which I'm going to show you here in a minute, of the same uh, name as the MySQL version. Um, so that means that all the, uh, specifically all the data tables and definition files that define what the schemas are, like, you know, if a field is a text field or a index field or whatever, are, are all uh, binary compatible, uh, which means you can take MySQL files without even doing an unload. You just take the MySQL files and use them with MariaDB. Also, all the client uh, APIs and protocols are the same. Uh, path names, sockets, everything should be the same, which means that all the languages, all the language bindings like for PHP and Perl and Python, Java, everything works. Um, and down here, there, um, the the list uh, if there are, if there are any uh, incompatibilities in a version, uh, they'll list the incompatibilities, which are um, usually inconsequential and usually are uh, the incomp incompatibilities are enhancements like if you look at this right here oh, got a little special effects here uh, if you look at this right here the slow query log has more information about the query which may be a problem if you've got a script that parses the slow query log so in other words uh, if there's an automated tool that's using MySQL's slow query log 
that means that you'll have to you know rewrite that uh, the other really cool thing about uh, MariaDB is that if you have a MySQL database definition that uses a storage engine that has, um, you know, there's one storage engine in MySQL, but there's a better one in MariaDB that fixes bugs or works faster, then MariaDB, when you uh, create a new database, will automatically transmute or uh, transform the old engine name into the new engine name, which is just very, very slick. So anyway, uh, enough about uh, why uh, to use MySQL or MariaDB over MySQL. Oh, bottom line is um, performance, right? Why, why would you go to any of this trouble anyway to begin with? And it's a performance issue. The, the, the least amount of performance increase I've seen installing MariaDB on a machine is uh, about a 30% increase. The most I've seen is a little bit over 100%. 100% meaning instead of doing a thousand transactions a second, the system with exactly the same um, optimizations and database configuration would run 2,000 requests a second or 2,100, a little bit over a thousand or a little bit over 2,000. So anyway, the that's the big win. Uh, so here, let's go to um, let's go to a system here and talk about how to install. MariaDB. So we're going to take a look at this type of system. So uh, we've got a uh, Linux system. It's an Ubuntu system and it's uh, Ubuntu um, Precise, which means it's the latest running the 3.2.0 kernel. So this is the latest stable version of Ubuntu and I just installed all the, uh, upgraded all the patches, the kernel and everything today. So let's go um, Let's see, we require a browser window here. So uh, let's go into Google and find out how to install MariaDB. So um, we're going to say uh, Maria, oh, here we go, MariaDB repository. Okay, uh, setting up uh, repositories. All right, so the first thing, we're going to look back here in our uh, terminal window. This is just a secure shell connection into uh, one of my servers. And we're going to say apt uh, cache policy mysql.com. All right, so what this tells us is that uh, right now, if we install MySQL, we'd be installing 5524. And it would come from the uh, Precise Updates main um, AMD 64-bit packages, which is Intel or AMD. So now when we change the repository, we should be able to do a uh, app, uh, app cache policy on the same uh, MySQL common package and see the MariaDB file. So we'll, we'll try that now. So we're going to go here to the... Um, uh, remember we did a search for repositories and I just clicked the download MariaDB da, 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 repositories. Okay, so and this is a really slick little um, uh, wizard that they've created here for you, which is just, it's way cool. So we're going to click Ubuntu, uh, Precise, which is what we're running, 5.5, and uh, you can, you know, if you're in Germany, you'd click here. Uh, if you're in Great Britain, you'd click this one, or in you know whatever Japan you click this one we're in the US so we're gonna click this mirror which is close to us and what we're gonna get down here is see this um, see this code right here like if I click um, uh, let's say we'll click the Switzerland one here did you see this this changed here this mirror so we'll go back to the US mirror and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and do a copy and then I'm going to go over here to our um, uh, apt get and aptitude repository definitions, which is very simple. Whoops. To help if I type the right thing. All right. So uh, apt get and aptitude are the two. That's the package manager for Ubuntu and Debian and all the Debian and Ubuntu forks. And so um, our spins, a uh, spin or a fork is where code is taken and, um, you know, takes a different direction. A spin is where you take a, a current version of a piece of software, like a, especially a Unix distribution or a Linux distribution like um, 
Ubuntu and you spin it which means you put in your own specific special packages so you might spin it for um, audio and video editing on the desktop or just a desktop system uh, I'm using uh, plain Ubuntu because I'm running on a server here so uh, we've gone to um, this directory here which is Etsy at sources list D and we're gonna look okay so there's no files here so what happens is when um, uh, apt-get or aptitude is used uh, the files in this directory are looked at to find out where the different repositories are for code so we're gonna say um, we're gonna create a file called Maria DB and we're gonna I just did a this is the VI editor and I'm gonna paste this information in here and save it now we're gonna get an error here um, so after we anytime you add a new set of repositories you have to do an update which means that uh, apt-get goes and pulls the the packages from the repositories okay now notice here it says we've got an error and I was I did this on purpose so you could see this is it says ignoring file MariaDB in directory Etsy app sources list D because it has no file name extension so for these files to be picked up they actually have to be named with the extension list so now I just change the name there if I do an update again I see that bango uh, couldn't be very because public key is not available hmm interesting so let's see let's go back here and see installing MariaDB deb files for detailed information on how to import our signing key okay so we've got another error here that our signing key in other words the key that tells us if the code we downloaded is actually real or has been hacked right you don't want to install hacked code that's a really bad idea so if we go here we'll click on this and it gives us this um, let's see okay so it looks like that we should be able to just type in this command bango bango and it says that uh, number of process number of imported there was no error so now we'll do another update. Oh baby! All right, now I'm going to say to redo the apt cache command that uh, we did a minute ago. Uh, R is uh, alias R. Uh, the R alias is alias to FC-S, which just allows you to redo a command. Because I didn't want to type out this, I was too lazy to type this thing out again. So I just said, "R redo the at last app cache command." Now, if we look here, uh, see, notice that this used to be the entry that we had, and it's been overridden by this entry. Look at that. So that means that if we do a um, apt git install my SQL common you'll notice that see it's loading from this um, pause this screen for a minute notice here that it's loading from the real Maria DB repository uh, which is awesome and now if we do a dpackage l which shows us all the packages on our machine and check for mysql whoops Help if I type the right syntax. We're going to grep or search for it. Now, now we've got the MySQL common package, and it's all Maria. It's from MariaDB. So if we go ahead and say, um, I'm going to pause it and find out the exact packages I have to install for uh, uh, installing all of uh, uh, PHP and Apache and uh, FPM uh, and as soon as I figured out that we'll be back here 
All right, we got to uh, add one other rep repository here also because we're going to be using FFmpeg and FFmpeg, the latest versions are built by uh, John here. And so let's see uh, how to, uh, well, here's the, if you, if you search for this right here, uh, if you search for John FFmpeg uh, PPA, then you'll, you'll find it. So we're going to go down here and see where it says to, let's see, read about installing. So let's see here. All right. Uh, if we look at the technical details of this PPA, um, it's going to say choose our Ubuntu version. We're using Precise, which is the latest. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to cut and paste this. Uh, go over here, do a PWD, make sure we're in the right place. Type in ffmpeg.list. Uh, Add this. Oh, we're going to get another error because we've got to add a key for that PPA also. All right. Uh, so it says no public key. So we're going to go over here and do the signing key. Let's take a look at our history here. Uh, we might if we're lucky this will just work here by magic we'll give it a shot it's pretty ghetto here I'm just uh, gonna see if we can actually do this no that's not right mm -mm. add repository signing key Mm, I'm going to have to pause this a minute and see how to exactly do this. Yeah, it says right here. Here's the uh, PPA we've got to add. Uh, so read about us installing. We're going to say I have to add repository. Okay, here we go. Go. Okay. Uh, it says uh, add app repository. So add app. Whoops. We have no add app repository, so we're going to have to do a apt cache search for add apt repository. Okay. Uh, now, notice I, what I did was I searched for this uh, program. Uh, app cache was too stupid to find it. App file did find it, and it told me that I've got to install this package here. So we're going to say apt install this package. It says it's already at the newest release. Okay. Oh, maybe I mistyped this. Let's do this. Okay, and after Charles story, that is the command we're going to execute. Let's get rid of this. And we're going to add in this. Bang. Oh, okay, so it actually uh, imported the key for us. That's pretty slick. And we're going to go to an app. Oh, well, first off, we'll do an apt cache policy ffmpeg. Now we see that. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's, I guess it's already updated it for us because now, see, if we had loaded um, normal Ubuntu, we would have picked up the uh, 081 packages by installing uh, John's package uh, repository we're picking up 0104 and he's about to release the 011 branch uh, so just for grins we'll say apt 
uh, get update to make sure everything's up to date. And now we're going to find the long list of stuff to install for uh, PHP. Uh, so first off, let's say apt get install, I don't know, let's just be wild here, PHP 5 dash asterisk. Now what this does is it's going to install every PHP file. And it tells me that there's some kind of conflict here. So evidently we can't do that, so I'm going to have to take another pause and figure out the right uh, set of packages to install. Well, that was a little bit painful. So, all right, I think that this is the command we're going to use here. And this is going to install, um, and actually, I'm going to do this, uh, let's see, where's SQL Relay here? Hmm. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is uh, pause this again and come up with a shell command to do this. Oh well, I'll, I'll just record this and show you what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to do a ghetto install script here. Um, so I'm going to say touch um, PHP 5 install and I'm going to change this to be executable and VIPHP boom. Whoops. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's my command. And it told me that uh, let's make this a bash script and turn on all commands so we see what the heck is happening. Um, I'm going to take this out because I'm unsure if I really require that. I do require uh, PHP let's see FPM FPM is not in there so PHP 5 FPM FPM is the um, uh, fast CGI process monitor that allows you to run PHP in separate processes now we did have a um, error that said uh, SQL relay is uh, no more so do 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 Let's see what happens if we do this. Now, if I say to run PHP 5 install, it says eh, because it's not in our uh, command path. So I'm going to put the dot uh, slash in front of it to say dot says right here. So I'm going to run the command out of here. And let's see what the heck has happened here. Well, it's it's doing something. Let's see if I can get out of this. Um, maybe not. Okay. Well, we'll just go ahead and let it. I I'd, I'd rather let this go instead of control C in and breaking out of it. Now we're loading all the um, the codecs and related files to FFmpeg because we loaded PHP five FFmpeg. And now we're loading Apache. Uh, we're loading some spelling stuff. We also loaded Image Magic. I also loaded uh, uh, PHP My Admin. So this is going to truck along here. Two, 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 two. And okay, so now we're loading the rest of my SQL. And I'm opting to use the um, PHP 5 series, which is actually what's um, built right now for Ubuntu. Uh, the PHP 5.4 packages will be far faster when they come out. And there's all sorts of stuff that's broken on 5.4, like the APC caching fails to work, xDebug kind of works. Uh, APC actually kind of works, and there's a bunch of glitches in it right now. So we're just going to use the um, uh, packages that have, all, that have been vetted with um, uh, the normal Ubuntu dis distribution or distro. 
and then when they vet out 5.4, we'll, I'll use that. Or after I get everything working, I might go to the .deb, um, Dot org, uh, D -O -T -D -E -B org, which is the uh, Debian package system that builds newer software. So I might go and uh, take a look at that. Okay, it must be installed and configured before it's used. Yes, I'll do that. Uh, so I'm going to type in a uh, just some random password here for. Um, Let's see, can't connect to the at this point. She's uh, retry. Well, I'm just going to say abort. Well, I'd say ignore. So something. Um, Oh, it uh, probably had some sort of random problem because of... I'm going to move this up one directory. Uh, let's see. So it had some sort of problem um, connecting with uh, MySQL. And that's probably because I should have... Um, I should have probably installed MySQL first and made sure it was all working uh, and make sure the process was started um, because if we do a ps uh, uxww and we grep for mysql yeah my sequel's not running so um wonder what happens if we um try to install this again php5 You know, I wonder, um, let's look at this uh, script here. Oh, that's the problem. I didn't really want this to have a, that dash Y in there means that it installs everything. Um, so I probably ought to change this uh, script to install MySQL first, uh, and then to uh, install PHP. In fact, I think think that might be a useful thing to do here so I'm gonna well let's see so here's a here's a ghetto trick um, to remove all this we're gonna say purge remove Yes, I want to remove everything. And we're just going to do a clean. Remove of everything. And what I did was I put a, uh, if you noticed the command I used there, we'll pull this file file up again. And I'll show you the exact uh, command because I put a specific option in the uh, removal syntax, which removes all the configuration files too, because I, I like to just remove everything. Okay, so here we are. Redo our VI command. Notice this, um, if I'd done an app get remove, it would have left configuration files around, which means passwords and configuration files. If I put the dash dash purge in, that removes every shred of everything. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change this to install. install my SQL common and we're going to look back up through here and see uh, what packages got installed so we got the client core I would have thought there would have been a server installed too
Okay, let's do this. Now I've got uh, the bash completion package on this machine right now, so what that means is I can say app get install MySQL dash tab. I said tab, and it's going to show me all sorts of packages. Uh, so MySQL common, MySQL client. SQL server. Let's see what that does when we look at it. Yeah, so if you look here, the following extra packages will be installed. So now, see, notice that all these other extra packages are getting installed. So I'm going to say no here and type in a history command. Put this in our script. Do, 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 do. All right. We'll put an exit here for right now. And we'll run our script again. And we will install. All right. Now, let's see. Put in a password. And since we're installing the database first, this should work now. And after this finishes, we should see the MySQL database processes running. And if they ain't running, then none of the PHP stuff or the PHP stuff is going to install, but it's going to be um, it's going to be throwing errors, and the installation process will fail to complete properly. figure out what this problem is. All right, so here's the secret. Uh, I'm going to install the MariaDB packages by name instead of the MySQL. I could probably figure out what the problem was with MySQL, but I'm too lazy right now. So I'm just going to install the... Oh, in fact, I could probably just get rid of this. Probably just install MariaDB client and MariaDB server. password everything should work and now we should have a running MySQL process come on you can do it you can do it you can do it boom so if we do a PSA we grip for SQL oh baby look at that now we've got our MySQL process running. So let's fix our little install script here. We really only require to do the... And actually I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to install the test package too. So now if we rerun our script here, um, since we've already got my MariaDB, the package is installed. It's just going to install the test package which is great because uh, we're going to use that to do performance testing and now it's going to go on and um, after it finishes installing MariaDB test bang 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 it's going to install all the PHP goodness alright uh, PHP pair oh that's interesting so we're going to look and see if uh, PHP pair actually installs because we require that Now, if we put in a password, and we're going to configure for Apache. Don't care about Light, Lighty right now. And this should just uh, fly right through. Now, it's installing PHP um, 5 uh, FFmpeg there. Notice that we already installed all the other dependencies from our previous run, so this should be really quick. Run, run, run. Look at that. Bang. 
Good times. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we got. Uh, we should be able to just navigate to. Remember, we started all this nonsense out because Inside Track Party wasn't uh, working. So now it says it works. So what this means is. Uh, Apache has started. Notice right here it says uh, Apache was running. It just reloaded its configuration. Uh, so that means that uh, Apache is running, PHP is running, uh, PHP my admin is installed, my SQL, MariaDB version is installed, and now we've got a working web server um, to fix our domains now. And behind that we've got MariaDB working, which was really why we did this whole video. So we'll um, drop this off right now. We'll complete this, um, and so the net effect of this is we've got all of our all of our web infrastructure installed. Uh, just in let's see which pair. Oh, so we do have to do apt get install PHP pair. Look at that. So we do have to install pair because pair is the uh, a repository tool that allows us to uh, install pr uh, PHP modules. So I'm going to uh, edit our little script here and say PHP pair. I'm going to add to the list. And um, I'm going to move this uh, PHP to uh, SBIN. Okay, so now we're all good. Uh, next video, we'll go through and um, uh, go through each of the um, uh, different domains that I've got that aren't resolving and uh, set those up as virtual hosts.